What is up? My name is Vincent Baker. I'm super excited to be here today. I'm going to be ranking all my board games. Now, I know for some of you this is not a big collection, but bear with me. I am a poor boy, but it's going to be okay. These are not quite all my games. I have some other games I haven't played in a very long time, or games that I have yet to play, so I excluded them from this list. These are just the games that I've played in recent memory, so I can give a more accurate description. Now that being said, we will be using the Vindicated Rating System, which is XYZV, which is, it sounds complicated, but it's not, I promise. X just means don't play it. Y is, you know, why bother unless you like this. Uh, Z is for amazing, and V is Vindicated Approved. It's like what me and a lot of my friends love. It's a go-to, and that's what we'll jump into. So with that being said, uh, this is my personal collection, so you can't really expect too many X's, but, you know, we'll see. We're, we're going to be stop starting from the bottom. Uh, and now we're here, so, <laughs> uh, okay, I, I might need to edit that one out. Uh, anyways, uh, there is a couple more than 30 games on the list, but it's bad for SEO, which is search engine optimization, so don't tell me in the comments that there's 32 games or whatever, I know, but I appreciate it. But without further ado, let's dive right in. So starting us right off is this game called Nyctophobia. Now apparently this game was designed to uh, be played with uh, someone who had a friend who was blind, which I think is very admirable. I actually have a blind friend myself, uh, so I think that's very cool. Um, but this game is not very fun. Uh, at least we didn't have fun with it the first time we played it. It might be fun if we tried to play it again, but it's been very hard to convince my friends to play again. Um, and the reason for that is, I don't know, there's a lot of setup, a lot of weird rules, and it's just kind of hard to play, so we give this an X. Next up, we have Epic Roll Eclipse, which is one of the expansions to Epic Roll. I never got to play Epic Roll, so maybe that's uh, change, maybe that would change my judgment, but at least when it comes to Epic Roll Eclipse, um, I think the artwork is beautiful, uh, I love the character designs, I like the graphic layout, but other than that, the rules seem kind of confusing, kind of complicated for such a small and simple game, so this wasn't something I've ever really been eager to jump back into, so I will give this one an X. Alright, so now we're actually in the top 30s. Uh, now this is actually where it gets pretty tough. These were the ones I was highly debating. So number 30, I think it's somewhere over here, we have Witch Slap. So this game is pretty cool. It's like a game of spoons, if you've ever heard of spoons. Uh, which I hadn't really until I played this game, but apparently you know, it's based off of spoons. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that in this video. But it has some interesting spell effects that kind of change the way the game plays. Everyone plays with witches. It's pretty fun, it's a cool game, it is one of those games that everyone is playing at the same time and it's very hectic and fast paced and people are slapping the table. So if you like that, then I definitely recommend this game. I'll give it a Y, it's based off of if you enjoy playing crazy hectic games with all your friends, it's competitive, and it's a lot of, um, a lot of chaos. So if that sounds like up your alley and if you like the witch theme as a bonus, then I would say you can go for it, especially since it's a very affordable game. Number 29, we have the Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. Now, I I hate ranking these games because honestly, everything at this point, I, I enjoy. It's part of my collection, so don't feel bad if I rank something lower than what you feel like it should be ranked. I love these games. Uh, Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade uh, plays, it's, it's a deck building game, and it plays similarly to some other deck building games, but it has uh, some rules that my playgroup found a little bit more confusing. It seemed a little less streamlined, and so it's just a little harder for us to get into. But if you love Cowboy Bebop, then I definitely recommend this game. So I'm going to give this the rating of Y. Next up at number 28, we have Throw Throw Burrito. Now this game I only ranked above. Like I think I would normally rather play the Cowboy Bebop game, but uh, the Cowboy Bebop game kind of fits in a similar role as to a lot of other games that will be higher up on this list that you'll discover. Throw Throw Burrito, on the other hand, uh, does not. Uh, it is very unique in how it is. It plays very differently. You're literally throwing burritos at each other during parts of the game. Uh, it's like Witch Slap in the sense that everyone's playing cards at the same time. Um, but unlike Witch Slap, you're throwing burritos. And this one, my friends, seem to enjoy a little bit more. And the rules are simpler for such a silly game. So I'm going to rank this one up. But I will still give it a rating of Y. So I wouldn't bother getting this unless you love like um, like party games and throwing things at your friends. Next up at 27, we have Disney's Villainous. Now again, I have one of the expansions, so maybe that's uh, changed my opinion a bit. But this has Hades and Dr. Faustier, so I love those characters, and uh, so I wanted to check out this expansion. Uh, I feel like it's a lot of fun, but there is different rules depending on which characters you're playing. And so it can be very hard to like pick up and play uh, without playing it a bunch of times, and I haven't got to play this game a whole lot. Uh, I liked a lot about it, the components are nice, 
Uh, the pieces are nice. The card art's amazing. Um, so I do like a lot about this game. It's just hard to kind of fit it in of when uh, we're wanting to play it with my friends. So that's why I rank this one next. And I will give this one... I'll, gi I'll give this one a Z because I think it is pretty different. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty amazing, um, especially if you love Disney. It's kind of fits snug in that Y to Z territory. If you hate Disney, uh, then you can check out the Marvel version. So they do have Marvel versions of this. If you hate Marvel and Disney, um, which I know for those thinking, yes, uh, I know Marvel is a part of Disney now, but I mean like Disney Disney or Marvel Disney. Uh, if you hate those, then maybe not check out this game. But otherwise, I'd say check it out. Number 26, we have the Oregon Trail. Now this one I picked up for only a dollar at, at Goodwill. Uh, I found this. I had no expectation of this game being any fun, but my friends and I had an absolute blast. It's an absolute crapshoot as to how this game will go. Sometimes you might die all at the very beginning. Sometimes you'll make it to the very end and everyone dies, or maybe you'll win. Uh, it's very, very <laughs> luck-based. Uh, but the stories that you tell from it uh, are all the more varied because of it. Um, I do think this game's a good bit of fun. Um, it's hard to say that this game is amazing though. It's very, it's very simple. Um, I'm gonna give it a Y. I would say just, just play this game if you want, uh, if any of your friends are really into the Oregon Trail. So, if they're really into that, or the idea behind the Oregon Trail, then I say give the game a try. Uh, otherwise, maybe you should give it a pass. <laughs> uh, next up on the list, at number 25, we have Grim Slingers. Now, I'm adding this in with the Northern Territory. Uh, they are different. There's been some updates and stuff like that. There's some new and different cards, things like that. Anyways, this game has some of the most gorgeous artwork and card design I've ever seen. It has a really cool story. Uh, some of the mechanics, I feel like it would be nice if they're streamlined and kind of condensed and simplified. Um, but that's kind of more for my personal playstyle and my friend's playstyle, so I'm not holding that against the game. If you love games that you can play, uh, like a story mode, or play versus, or play all these different ways, and have a lot to it packed in a tiny box, like these games offer like dozens and dozens of hours of fun. So I definitely recommend these games if you are a fan of like RPGs, like in a box, then I would definitely recommend these because they're a lot of fun. It's just hard to um, kind of find the time and you have to have a dedicated group of friends. This isn't like a game you just throw out there to play with your friends at some random moment. All right, number 24, we have the Borderlands game, which is Tiny Tina's uh, Robot Tea Party. Is that what it is? Yes, Robot Tea Party. Now this game is great if you're a Borderlands fan. Though, don't get too excited because you don't get to play with your favorite Vault Hunters. You don't get to play as uh, psychos or go on a murderous killing spree. You are trying to assemble Claptrap, our good old friend that we don't hate, Claptrap. Um, this game, I would say, is similar to games like Love Letter or Flux in terms of their easiness and being able to just you know pull out the box and play. Um, I would say this game, though, overall is not quite as fun as those games but it is made up for by it being Borderlands, so depending on where you set out with Borderlands would determine whether or not you want to play it, and it's for that reason I give this game a Y. Number 23, we have Dead of Winter. Um, this game, I think, is very thematic, very fun. It's a zombie survival game set up in the Dead of Winter, if the name did not give that away. Um, this game is kind of similar to Grim Slingers. It's, gr it's great at telling a story. It's very thematic. I think the rules of this are a little bit easier to understand. However, uh, there is a lot of rules to this game, um, and the game does take a long time, especially when you're first ready to play. Like, when you first learn the game, you can expect, you know, reading the rules for an hour, and the game might take up to, like, three hours, uh, depending on how how fast you adjust to the game. I'm pretty sure the first time I played this, it took us a total of four hours. Um, <laughs> and so, it, it can be, like, a very... Um, it can be very rewarding, but you definitely have to be dedicated if you want to play Dead of Winter, but it is a ton of fun, so I definitely recommend it. Um, I will give this game a Z for being amazing, though, because I think that if that if that's what you want, if you want to play like for four hours, you want to play a zombie survival game, then it'll be hard to find something better than Dead of Winter, so I do recommend it. All right, next up at 22, we have Telestrations After Dark. So with this, um, we... So, I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. <laughs> okay, so Telestrations After Dark is a fun game where you have a random word that gets chosen and then you have to write it out and someone has to draw it and then they have to write what they think the per previous person drew and it just ends up being absurd. Uh, the only problem with this game is there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of time where you might draw your picture and you're waiting for like five minutes for everyone to do their thing and you pass the book and really 
you're you're setting up everything for a great payoff. The payoffs end up being hilarious, but you can also end up with times where people uh, end up like not like people choose how they vote and stuff, which makes sense. But like sometimes you you can just feel like you're getting snubbed of votes. Um, so it, it it's not as fun as I thought it'd be when I got it, but it's still a really fun time. I'm gonna give that game a Y, um, and I would say I would say watch a gameplay <laughs> video of it, uh, see how how you uh, feel about that, and then go from there. It is a very fun game. They also have one that's not After Dark. After Dark is the 18 plus adult version. However, not everything in this is adult themed. Um, it's just there's some adult stuff thrown in there, whereas the normal version is clean, supposedly. I haven't played it, but I, I would suppose it would be. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my rating for Telestrations. At number 21, we have the Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End Pirates Dice. Now, I've had this game for like 15 years. Uh, this game is very simple. I believe they actually played it in the movies, uh, a more severe version where they offered up their souls. We don't do that here, but there is a, it, it, there, this is a fun game. It's very easy to pick up and play. I never have to reread the rules. Even picking up and playing it like 10 years later, after like dusting it off and, uh, from the closet and finding it, I remember how to play it perfectly. It's just a really, really fun game. Uh, it's all about like dice rolling and hidden information and bluffing. So if that sounds up your alley, I definitely would recommend this game. Uh, I would rank this game at a Y, uh, just because I feel like you really need to be into those things. Uh, if you like, you really need to love pirates, dice rolling, bluffing, and hidden information. If you love those things, then I would definitely recommend this game. All right, so next up we have Ruby Combat Ready. Now this game is uh, is pretty different from a lot of games on my list. This is probably the only game I have that's cooperative. Uh, Dead of Winter is semi-cooperative, and Grim Slingers can be cooperative, uh, but Ruby is like. 100% cooperative. That's the only way to play this game. You're going to be playing as a team. There's no traders, and I really love that part about it. And, and also, out of all my games, this personally has my favorite artwork. I love, I love the the colors that are used and the style that this is drawn. So it really won me over with those, and the components are really nice as well. The problem is there's a lot of rules to this game, and uh, even when we tried really hard, we still got some of the rules wrong. Uh, um, and the game went really long for us, and it seems like the rules that we missed would make the game go even longer. Uh, so my friends have been hesitant to play this game again, but I definitely want to dive back into this because I do think this is a really fun game. I definitely think it's worth playing and worth trying, especially if you're a huge Ruby fan. Currently, I'm going to give it a Y until I'm able to play it some more. Um, I assume the game will be better, though, uh, once we get the, nail, the rules nailed down, and then I would be willing to give this game a Z. But I cannot give this game a Z until I know for certain. So currently it's a Y, and the Y is, is if you love Ruby, then check out this game. Alright, next up at number 19 we have Dungeon Roll, which one reason why I love Dungeon Roll is because technically this is one of the only games I have in which you can play solo. It's a very simple game. Once you learn the rules, you'll never have to relearn the rules. It's very intuitive, and it's a dice rolling game in which you uh, roll dice, and you will roll different faces of different classes. So you can roll wizards, you can roll fighters, you can roll rogues. Uh, and then you have them in your party, and you go through the dungeon, see how far you can get, and you score points. The game's super simple. It comes in this very thematic uh, treasure chest box, which is super, super cool. Uh, the game's highly affordable. I definitely recommend this game. Um, I think this game fits into like basically any board game collection. I would give this game a Z because of that. I think that there's not many other games that feel like this game. Um, it does kind of have a generic fantasy feel to it, which there are a lot of games that have that feel. So in that way, this game's not too unique. But as far as its gameplay and mechanics and being so good at what it does, because I've played other games that involve rolling dice and drafting, um, this game to me has been the simplest and the easiest to play and just the most fun in general. So I'd recommend this game. So I'd give it a Z. Next up, we have a very rare game, actually. It's the Definite Card Game. Now, it originally did not come in this box. The box got destroyed many years ago. And this game is only actually in Japan and Italy. Uh, it's never actually been ported into the United States, so we had to <laughs> order this a long time ago overseas. But it's basically a type of werewolf or mafia game in which someone is playing as Kira, who is the killer, and they are basically the ones with the death note, so they can write people's names on the death note and have them killed. In my opinion, this is the best game I've played in terms of that werewolf mafia type style, or if you're a fan of Among Us, which has been huge this year, 
it's in that kind of vein of someone being the traitor and they are systematically trying to take people out each round. Now the reason why it's not higher on my list is because it still runs into the problem that many of these types of games do, which is everyone closes their eyes and then someone can you know, ruffle their shirt by accident as they're trying to choose who dies and someone who is very attentive can hear the person beside them moving and then know who the killer is, which is a very meta uh, thing to do, but that happens all the time w with these types of games. And I think that really does detract from it, unfortunately. There are some hidden information games that don't rely on that or, or don't use that as a mechanic. But out of the games that I have and a lot of the ones that i played a lot do, and this is the best one I've played. And uh, I guess I should give this a rating too. So I'm going to say I'm gonna say it's amazing. Uh, even though it has that drawback, it, it is the best of that type of game that I said. So I'll give it a Z. Number 17, I've got a bad feeling about this, is uh, this cool Star Wars game that's set up uh, similar to Exploding Kittens, but this one is more fun, and it has a Star Wars theme. There's things in it that make you uh, act like Chewbacca or, you know, speak like Yoda and things like that. It's a very simple party game. Definitely recommend checking this out if you like Exploding Kittens or very simple party games. I'll give it a Z for that reason. Number 16, we've got Cover Your Kingdom, which is hidden somewhere from, uh, from my eyesight. Oh yeah, it's over here. Uh, Cover Your Kingdom. Now this game, uh, I think is pretty cool. Um, it, it's very, like the artwork isn't personally for me, but I don't hate the artwork. I just, I'm not in love with it. But even so, this game is so easy to play. And I'm very eager to bring this over to um, my fiance's families because I feel like she'll, the, the, I feel like they'll like this game a lot. Um, there's a lot of puns and like dumb humor in it. <laughs> and it's very simple and it's cool that you just get to have your kingdoms and you get to play your creatures and stuff. Um, I definitely think this is a cool game to check out if you're into that kind of stuff. Especially if you're fans of like Narnia, Harry Potter, and stuff like that, because they make a lot of references to those things. And I'll give it a, uh, I'll give this one a Y. So this one will be a Y. If you're into those things, if you kind of like the way it looks, if you like those types of games, and you like those things, then I'd recommend it. Okay, number 15, we have the Bravest Warriors card games. Now you can, you can just choose one of these packs, but you can also go with both. Uh, this game is very simple, really fun. I keep forgetting the rules though, which kind of dings it for me. But if you're a fan of Bravest Warriors, I'll uh, I'll say this one is a Y. So fan of Bravest Warriors, go for it. If not, don't worry about it. Number fourteen, we have Growl. Now I I'm fully aware that I said that the Death Note game was the best hidden trader game, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is competing for it uh, because this one is like Werewolf, but the biggest difference is this one is you play with cards and you don't have to worry about the, the, the problem I said the Death Note game have, uh, has. However, there is some like sort of weird setup rules. It's not as easy to jump into. I'd say the Death Note one's definitely better if you're more into the Death Note theme. If you're definitely into that anime, I'd recommend that one. Otherwise, I recommend Growl if you're more into the Werewolf theme. It really comes down to that. I think they both are pretty equal. I know that they might not seem equal because they're different on the list, but this, these are like marginal differences here, and I had to put one above the other, but I'm going to give Growl a Z because it's super awesome. Next up at number 13, I thought it would be fitting to put Bloodborne here. Uh, this card game is a ton of fun. This one has a bit more strategy than the other games. Basically, you're all playing as hunters that are competing to slay monsters. The last one to deliver the slaying blow will get the trophy. And at the end of the game, if you have more trophy and more blood than your other hunters, you're going to win the game. This game is very interesting. It's very uh, deceptive how much strategy and how clever you have to be with it. There is a light uh, card drafting mechanic in there. And unlike the other deck building games I have, everyone does start off with the same hand of the same deck, but they have different cards that are uh, each unique. So instead of having like multiples of the same, you're all playing from a vast array of different options, which I think is really cool. And this actually made me very uh, engaged and interested in the Bloodborne universe, which is a video game that I hadn't even played. So I will give this game a Z. Next up, we have Codenames Pictures. This game was my go-to party game. Um, I think it's super awesome. Uh, I personally prefer this to the original Codenames or any other Codenames variant. If you have been interested in Codenames, I recommend Codenames Pictures. Um, it's very hard to describe this game, but basically you can have any number of players. You split into two teams. So you can have four on four, two on two, whatever. And you try to uh, tell people, try to give people hints and try to have them select the cards that, that go to your team's points. Uh, definitely recommend looking up how to play this game. It's very hard to explain uh, unless you actually like visually show people, but it's a ton of fun. I brought this over one year for Christmas, and I had my grandparents play it, my parents play it, 
they all loved it. Like, they all had a really great time. They don't even normally play board games, but this was a very easy game to teach them. It was a ton of fun. I recommend this if you're into, like, the Jackbox video games or something. This is a good game for you. Uh, I'll say that this is a Z for amazing. At number 11, we had the DC deck building game. I'm a huge fan of the Cerberus system, which is what these uh, Cryptozoic deck building games run off of. The DC deck building game was the one I was first introduced to by them. Uh, and then this one has, uh, this is one of the expansions that has some of the secondary characters in it. Um, I recommend if you're a huge fan of DC, uh, you can get this one or the other one. They're both equally good. Uh, they also have a lot of other expansions, and really I'm sure that they're all good. I haven't played all of them, but every single one of Cryptozoic's games I think have been really great. I'll give this one a Z. Number 10, I got Neon Gods. Uh, this game surprised me with how good it is. I picked it up on a whim. I did a blind buy, which I don't like to do, uh, but with things going on this year, it's been really hard to test things out. And we had an 80 stream coming up, and I felt like Neon Gods really fit the bill. So went ahead, gave Neon Gods a try, and me and my friends really love it. There's a unique card drafting mechanic in it where all the cards cost different amounts of money. And as they are purchased, they go down and they start getting cheaper and cheaper, but it makes it more likely that people will pick them up. I think it's a really cool mechanic. And also while you're drafting your uh, card deck, you're also trying to take over a city. You're building power plants, you're making products, selling it for money and you're fighting androids and you're fighting your opponents. There's a lot going on in this game, but it's actually very streamlined for how much is going on. So I really appreciate this game and I give it a Z. At number nine, we have Love Letter. Now the time that we have is Adventure Time because me and my friends are huge fans of Adventure Time. Um, really any one of these works though. I do like the special rules included in the Adventure Time one, which basically means if you play Finn or if you play Jake, and you get to tag out Finn or Jake, you get to win that round, which is very fun and exciting. It rarely happens, but it makes it all the more special when it happens. I give Love Letter a Z. At number eight, we have Spyfall, which is the only thing competing for my attention when it comes to Codenames, Pictures, and Spyfall. I rank Spyfall slightly higher because there's just something... There's something that's just... Uh, I feel like there's less downtime, and I think that's something that gets overlooked a lot in games, but I think it's something that's very important. In Spyfall, uh, one person is randomly a spy, and everyone else is at a location, and there's a certain person at that location, and you have to exchange information with everyone at the table without giving the spy too much information, but you don't know who the spy is, and so it creates this very, very interesting dynamic that's very unique, and I haven't felt that in any other game. So I give this a Z. At number seven, we have Epic Spell Wars. Now, they have a ton of different expansions for this game. Every one I've played has been really fun, so I would say all these are generally the same, though I, with the caveat, I have not played all of them, so if you get one that sucks, uh, that's on you. Uh, <laughs> the first one, I will say, doesn't use the tower, though. This one does use the tower. This is the second expansion, so if you want to go with a safe bet, I recommend Rumble at Castle Tentakill. Uh, this game is very fun. It's silly. The, the humor and the artwork's outlandish. It's crazy. It is adult themed, so I only recommend it if you're okay with that. Otherwise, this is not for children. Uh, but I will say this gets a Z. At number six, we have Here to Slay. Now, I will say this game has been a ton of fun for a lot of my friends and I. The artwork is very uh, cutesy, but it's fun. It's colorful. The box for this, I have the deluxe edition from Kickstarter. It has the magnetic lock. It has a nice dice tower. It has like dice with like etched in like unicorn horns for the for the ones on it. And it has a ton of monsters. It has all these bonus features that make this game really stand out and it, like be. Uh, make it a lot more fun than I think the standard edition is. So that being said, I would say that this version I would give uh, the amazing rating of Z, but I would say if you have the $20 version, um, it, it kind of takes down a bit from it if it's the standard version. Now, you do get it for a better price, so there is that, and that does matter, but I'd say it teeters more on the Y and X. You know, If you really love the aesthetic of this, if you're a huge fan of T-Turtle and what they do, uh, and unstable unicorns and things like that. It pushes it up to a Z. Otherwise, this might be in the Y territory when it comes to some of the uh, the more party, fun, you know, competitive elements that this game offers. All right, so now we're in my top five. Now this is by far the hardest top five I've had to do. I think I'd made this list a week ago and I lost the list and I'm pretty sure this list was completely different a week ago. <laughs> but anyways, in my top five, I have Adventure Time Flux. Now I know Flux is criticized heavily in the board gaming community because people see it as just this like random crapshoot of luck. Uh, however, I do find that I feel like I tend to win this game uh, more often when I try to play like with strategy, and I feel like 
I don't know. I feel like I have a competitive edge, especially when you play with a couple people as opposed to a big table. Either way, I have a ton of fun playing this game. I love Adventure Time again, so that's the version I have. If you don't like Adventure Time, that's okay, though, because they have Normal Flux, they have Zombies, they have Cthulhu, they have probably Batman. They have, like, any type of Flux you, you could basically think of. Adventure Time is just the one I picked up. I love how they make the rules very simple, but they also relate it to the story of Adventure Time, and it's just a very fun game. This is one of my go-to games of just, like, throwing it in my bag, pulling it out at the hotel whenever you're staying at a convention or whenever you go on a trip. This is just one of the easiest and most fun games for me to do for that. So that's why I had uh, to put Flux here. And, um, you know, I'll say Flux is a, is a Z, but I'll say that Adventure Time Flux is a V because I love Adventure Time so much, and Flux is a great game. All right, number four, we have Campy Creatures. Now, this was the first game that I think ever... I'm not even sure if I got a rating of a V or not, but I know that, um, I know that some of my friends really love this game in our group, and... This game is, the art aesthetic is just so cool. It's like retro monsters, and the gameplay is simple, and it's easy to dive into, it's a ton of fun, and we give this game a V. This game is super cool. Now, for most of these ratings, it's just me giving the ratings, but I'm pretty sure overall our team gives this game a V, so you can feel good about this choice. Um, it's really, I, I, the only way I would, wouldn't recommend this game is if you just hate the artwork, which I don't know how you would. Uh, because the artwork's amazing, but this game is a ton of fun. I recommend it for anyone. The only problem with this game is that they have a second edition. The first edition I don't think is available hardly anywhere, and the second edition I don't think is as good. Um, the second edition adds a lot more rules, a lot more complexity, and I feel like if we had started with the second edition, we wouldn't feel as strongly about this. Like, I'm not sure. Like, it would just change everything, but with this version, the first edition, if you find it, definitely recommend getting it. We give it a V. Number three, we have King of Tokyo Dark Edition. It's my favorite way to play King of Tokyo, but there's multiple ways to play. I recommend any of them. They're all they're all fantastic. King of Tokyo Dark Edition is just cool because uh, everything's just premium quality. It's nice. It has some uh, as these this new mechanic called uh, wickedness, uh, which gives you an extra reason to roll ones and twos, which before you didn't have a reason to roll ones or twos. It was just always worse for you. This game opens up some uh, new strategies, but it's still very simple, it's very thematic. You just play as giant kaiju monsters stomping through Tokyo, destroying things, using laser beams, and using your claws to kill things. What more could you ask for? I give this game a V. Alright, so number two, we have another Cryptozoic deck building game that uses the Cerberus engine. We have the Cartoon Network Crossover Crisis. Now, I feel like a broken record, because again, we have Adventure Time here, I'm a huge fan of it. And we have all types of other Cartoon Network characters. I'm a huge fan of Cartoon Network. I grew up on it. I just think it's amazing. And this has been my favorite game for a very long time up until recently. I think it's just very, very fun. And the only way I wouldn't recommend this game is if you don't like Cartoon Network. Otherwise, I highly recommend you add this game to your collection. If you want something a bit more serious, of course, you can go to the DC Deck Women game. But since we love Cartoon Network here at Vindicated, uh, we rate this game a little bit higher. And this game still could say B. And now for number one. What could possibly have dethroned my favorite game very recently? Cartoon Crossover Crisis is just so much fun. Like, I can't even imagine what could beat it. Can you? It's probably this thing that you've noticed in the corner of the screen this entire time, which is the Cartoon Network Crossover Crisis uh, Animation Annihilation deck building game, which is the expansion. Um, it's probably an obvious choice here. But I just think that this th this is just so much fun. <laughs> I've had so much fun with it. And the reason why I ranked this one slightly higher is because you can play it by itself. It's a standalone game. And so when comparing the two, this one does only play up to four, and that one does play up to five. So if you normally play with five people, I could see that being a detractor. But I do feel like this one plays tighter. And by that, I mean whenever you play as your characters, I feel like you're able to pick up your synergy cards better. There's less cards in the deck, which would normally be a weakness for me, but since you're trying to pull cards into your deck that aid your strategy and helps like helps out your deck, this game allows it for it to be easier for you to pick up the right cards that you want. Um, and I really enjoy playing the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which is included in this expansion, even though you don't see them on the front cover. And we still have some Adventure Time fun here with Fiona and Cake. So, I just really like this one, but really, they're best when they go together, but I still give this one a V, and it's my number one, personally. So, yeah, there we go. It's ranked at a V. Hopefully, you enjoyed my top 30, technically 32, 
uh, top board games. Uh, let me know what you think I would like uh, based off of my board games. And let me know if any of these games caught your attention and you'd like to pick them out. I'd be more than happy to hear that. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Uh, every little bit that you do really helps out a lot at the channel um, because, uh, you know, that's just how the algorithm works. <laughs> Take care, and as always, stay awesome.